Okay, people. Today I have some aluminum work. Uh, this is a piece of a uh, 90 millimeter, 90 millimeter bar of uh, 6082 aluminum, and I've got to make some um, some. Let me show you some nuts like these. Uh, four of these and four of these. And since I have a uh, good length of aluminum bar in the chuck now, uh, um, I took as a slide a cut as I could, and now again I'm gonna measure the taper that the lathe makes. Uh, I think I've had around 15 hours uh, on the new bearings now, so I guess it's uh, a good time now to see if, if, if anything has happened with the um, with the alignment or anything. Um, when I was here last time, um, before I left, I again checked the, the spindle play and um, as close to the bearing uh, or about at the center of this collar uh, when I measure uh, the play, um, I can get no more than the width of the needle. So I guess that's pretty darn good. And around here, it's it's around 100, I would say. But now, uh, let's measure the taper in that cylinder that I just turned. Okay, I cannot show you uh, the measuring because I have my other camera and I cannot uh, put it on the tripod because it doesn't fit it. Um, but there is no measurable error at all. It is zero here and zero here and zero here. So I guess I should be pretty happy with that. Maybe I got some aluminum chips uh, in the micrometer. But at top I would say the result is the same as last time, which was uh, at most two thousands of a millimeter. And now, now let me measure the length of the Okay, let's see how long is our measuring distance. It's about 115 millimeters. So, I guess I would say 1000 per 100 millimeters. I guess that's not too far from the reality. And let me tell you, I am happy about that. <laughs> There's no real way to get it any better than that. And also, I think the surface finish on this piece is pretty darn good. Um, I'm use, I was using this tool and the feed was one tenth of a millimeter per revolution. Um, and I got many questions about using the carriage to drag the tailstock. So now I'm gonna show you that mechanism. So first, there is a hook like this on the tailstock. Um, it goes beneath the tailstock and somehow attaches there. I guess I can show you the underside of the, uh, the tailstock also, so I can show you where it's attached to. But basically there is about 15 millimeters of gap between the... Okay, the tailstock is now visible on the bottom side and here you can see how the hook attaches to it and um, I've been thinking this was a retrofit feature but looking at it now I'm not completely sure because this looks like a cast piece but I don't know it still might be might or might not be but basically that's how it is so there's two threaded holes in the tailstock and a hook like this which is pretty simple and you just bolt it to the bottom of the tailstock or wherever you want to bolt it I have no no idea why you couldn't bolt it on this this side either and now let me say you uh, show you the counterpart which is right here and it is extremely easy to build for late uh, for this model late because it has a t-slot um, on the far side of the cross slide. So 
basically it's just a U-shaped piece like this that slides uh, in the in the T-slot and this goes uh, behind the other hook right in here and basically what you have to do is just make these two pieces so that the height is correct but no other requirements and this is especially nice because when you uh, when you want the um, uh, the carriage to go as close to the tailstock as possible you can just move this piece away so it doesn't take that 15 millimeters of space and then you can just move it back here it's very very nice uh, okay now I'm gonna set the tailstock back in place and I have to do some pretty serious boring on uh, drilling I mean on this piece too it needs a, a 50 millimeter hole in the center so I'm again gonna use that carriage to drag the tailstock okay let me show that to you and by the way um, uh, the first day I guess when I got this laid here uh, the spindle bearings were still still not changed of course but I did some initial tests and I tried uh, I tested the alignment of the um, the, the cross slide ways to the bed and um, I used uh, a 300 millimeter square to do that some double pins between the dovetail and then the, the angle pointing this way and I did the test uh, I did the test um, using the uh, first using the, the angle one way and then I turned it to the other way and uh, the error for the whole length of the um, angle was around 100 of a millimeter so I'm guessing that's also pretty good so there should be no accuracy issues with this lathe and that's good but now let's get back to the uh, tailstock dragging uh, topic uh, I now have a uh, it's a 20 uh, 31 and a half millimeter drill bit the biggest one I could find with a Morse 3 I also have a adapter from from 3 to 4 but I'm not going to use it because this is going to be big enough um, and I have a, a 10 millimeter pilot hole I'm not going to bother drilling any bigger ones actually I don't like drilling too many sizes I like to just go with the pilot size and then straight to the big boy uh, as long as the pilot hole is larger than the web of the drill but this one also has a pretty sharp grind not sure if you can see it on this crappy camera so now I'm just gonna move the hooks in place like this and now you can see the tailstock is following the carriage and what's very important is to have a slight preload or at least a, a very small play uh, in the tailstock between between the tailstock and the waist and it's also very easy to do in this lathe by just tightening this knot by hand uh, it's good to um, rock the whole thing back and forth and at the same time tighten it so so that's gonna give the best results at least I, th I think it's gonna give the best results and then you can also uh, screw the quill out the amount that you want and then you can lock it so it's gonna be a very rigid setup and I have set uh, let's see 160 rpm and the feed is pretty high it's 2500 per revolution so let's see how this goes and by the way uh, I've been switching gears quite a few times now and it looks like I can actually find every gear in the box uh, it's just that um, if it doesn't doesn't engage the first time uh, just let the spindle run turn a little bit and then then try again and 
then it goes. So no problems actually. Yeah, and also this is what happens when you forget to uh, put on the, uh, the tailstock support when you're taking a big cut on a long piece. Okay, I guess we're ready to go. The latest quite quiet with these low speeds. I already put some cutting, cutting oil and now let's go and see what happens. I'm not sure if the speed is too high. We will see. The drill is pretty sharp. Nice chips. Okay, I guess this is enough. So with very little effort, we just drilled about 20 mm long hole. So I really, really recommend this. Um, it's not all that useful with aluminum because it's soft to drill anyways. But when you have, especially on a bigger lathe, when you're uh, drilling, for example, a drill like this, this is a 56 mm drill. Uh, three and uh, I mean uh, two and about one eighth, I think in inches, Morse five. When you're drilling with a drill like this uh, in steel with low RPM, uh, you can just leave the drill drilling and maybe do something else. Meanwhile, so I really recommend building one of these hooking systems. Okay, I hope this video answers your questions. Um, I have the third part of the wheelhub project. Um, uh, I still haven't edited it completely, but uh, I'm hoping to do it in a few days. Uh, uh, the problem with me for full HD videos is that my computer is getting a little aged and I'm not, not sure if also Windows Movie Maker that I'm using is, is not maybe the one of the fastest programs but at the moment for a 15 minute video it's taking me almost a full day to edit so that's pretty painful actually and uh, it's just waiting time for example every time you uh, pause and start the video when you edit it. It takes about 30 seconds just to pause and start playing again. And the loading of the videos and converting takes many many hours. So I'm kind of looking for a better, better solution for that. So maybe my next videos will have a few differences to the old ones. But when I get a better solution for editing, uh, I hope my videos will still be a little bit more better quality. Because uh, the editing work is not nearly as good as I would like it to be, because stopping and starting is, is taking so much time now, and I try to do that, that as little as I can now. Okay. I hope this video was any helpful to you and I hope to provide you with some good footage soon again. Okay, thank you and see you again.